from. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Friday. Don't forget Flash Friday coming up in just a few weeks. And we're going to have it every week this summer, all summer long. In fact, it will start before summer starts, and I will be here live every Friday this summer. That's my goal. That's my plan. So uh, stay tuned for details on that. Also stay tuned this hour details on our upcoming Cinco de Mayo show, which we do every year. It's going to be only slightly different this year because it's going to be on Cinco de Mayo, which happens to be on a Monday. So details are coming up this hour on our annual Cinco de Mayo show at Camacho's. And uh, we're very excited about that. And in the meantime, on this fantastic Friday here in Southern California and wherever you may be, it's wide open telephones. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything at all. We can talk about anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you have to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Uh, okay, I have a situation. This is like between right and wrong, I guess you could say. Um, before I even started listening to you, I guess uh, I went out, got drunk, and then got to go pregnant. Well, I'm not sure if I got her pregnant or not. Um, now, recently this month, her parents tell me, oh, you know, do I want to go half on a paternity test? But, you know, it's a possibility it could be mine. And if so, then I start getting, you know, my, my wallet starts getting taxed. But at the same time, right now, I mean, I'm trying to spend time or see the kid, but, you know, she doesn't want to worry about me trying to spend time with the kid. She's just like, oh, well, let's get the papers done. Oh, let's take the test first. So well, I'm you're not like, doing anything until you talk to an attorney. Okay. I know you are uh, short of cash and you don't want to do that. But we're talking about the possibility of shelling out hundreds of thousands of dollars in your lifetime. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so uh, to spend a couple of hundred dollars at an attorney is nothing compared to hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So you have to find an attorney. Do you have an attorney? Uh, no, I know I could get one, though. I mean, Does I anyone in your family have an attorney for any purpose at all? Uh, my aunt, actually. She is. All right. You're going to have to sack up. You're going to have to talk to her. You're going to have to tell her that you need to talk to her attorney. Now, uh, your, her attorney may not be an attorney that handles these kinds of cases. Right. The idea is yet to refer to somebody who he recommends. Okay. I'm, I'm, man, I, I just I really don't even want to deal with the whole situation. It's like, you are not it's signing like, anything that an attorney has not read and pointed at you and said, sign this. Okay. All right, cool. All right. I, I, that was my only question, I guess. I, can you take me out with a bong hit? I'll take you out with a bong hit. Here you go. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Mike. Father. Son. Forgive me for I I got married two years ago. Why'd you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I agree. 
Yes, 100%. I'm a complete idiot, and now I'm actually out of that situation now. How did you uh, get out of the situation? Uh, I waited for her to get back from work. Uh, she went to night school. Um, I waited for her to leave. I got my stuff. Every little single item I had that belonged to me, I loaded up my car, and I booked it. How did she react? Blew up your phone, of course. <laughs> oh, man, you don't even know, Tom. Um, half of the country where she's from is blowing up my cell phone as it is. What country is that? Uh, Peru. She's from Peru. Yes, indeed. And you got married to what? To get her a green card or something? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Uh huh. And of course, being from Peru, I imagine she wanted to have a baby sooner than later. Yeah, actually, um, we were just talking about that like about a month ago. She wanted a kid. Uh, she wanted to get married. I told her I wasn't financially stable. I I didn't want to get married. Um, I'm not an atheist. I'm agnostic. I didn't want to do anything to have it to do with the church. I didn't want to get given away by a pedophile. So um, pretty much it all blew up in one moment to another, and I decided, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to pack up my stuff. I'm going to get whatever balls I have left and just take my stuff and my insanity and just leave town, leave city. And do you have the legal papers filed and everything? Uh, no, actually not at this moment. Um, like I said, this is just recently that happened. Um, I'm in the middle of trying to get my stuff together. Um, I'm going to try to get as much money as I can. I'm going to go file for divorce ASAP. Yeah, don't wait because uh, it, I don't know if she has a job, but if you have to pay uh, vagina money, it's uh, one day of vagina money for every two days you remain married. Oh, yes, indeed, Tom. I was speaking to one of the members. They've all been giving me advice. Um, one of her aunts just recently... Um, Divorced her husband, which also was her uncle. That's how actually we met. And we could, she informed me that we could just um, file for divorce on the false pretense. Maybe that might be an option also. I don't know. What, what, do you, what would you suggest? Well, it wasn't under a false pretense, was it? Um, no. Well, she knew right away I was helping her out with her papers. Um, it's a little bit different now. They only give her residency for about two years now. So um, we should have another appointment coming due within this, within this next year. Um, if I'm not there, pretty much she's going to be uh, deported, I, I guess, or her green card. Not uh, necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, you know, if if she she could very well go to the INS and say you were an abuser or something like that. Okay, so even though if she said that she was at fault and her, her whole family knows and my family knows that she was an abusive one, uh, can I use that for my uh, my offense? Well, you don't you don't have to defend yourself before the INS. You're a citizen, right? You don't need a defense. Okay, so would I still have to pay alimony, even though I was married to her for about a year and a half? Like you could. Uh, does she have a job? Probably yes, not. She, uh, actually, she, she does. She does. Does she make as much money as you do? No, no, no. We were just we're dumb kids. Uh, living in a, live, just running a room out, just poverty stricken kids, and all right. I got well, my you're gonna, to you're gonna ask that question of the attorney. Okay. And you're gonna get divorced with an attorney. You're not gonna try to do it yourself or try to save money like that. You're gonna do it with an attorney. Okay. All right. All right, I'll do it. And I just want to say, Tom, thank you very much. I've been listening to you for such a long time. And By I the way, you agreed to marry her because she was the hottest piece of ass you ever saw. And uh, you wanted to keep that piece of ass in the country so you could bone it a little more. <laughs> yeah, then she blew, she blew up like 50 pounds, uh, five foot four, weighed 170. She weighed like 120 when I first met her. Oh, man, Tom, this is such a bad situation. I'm glad I got myself out of that situation. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and by the way, does she uh, still bother you? Does she scream and yell and freak out? Yes, indeed. She came to my work. She... Uh, she was a ball busting bitch. She went to my job. Uh, she in front of all her coworkers, all my coworkers. She just blew up in front of my manager. Uh, she's actually her mom's actually flying in from Peru to try to figure out what to do about the situation. Oh man, she's as worse as her mom is. <laughs> I'll bet her mom's even better in the sack than she is. <laughs> oh man, she's a cow. Oh, it looks like she ate a cow. I tell you that much. Oh, is that so? Oh yeah, by far, by far. She's a fat cow. Oh man. Well, you got to look at the mom. That's that's the future. That's what they say, and it's generally true. Yes, indeed, Tom. And you don't know how many times I've passed up more beautiful tail just to stay with this fat, with this fat person, honestly. I am sure that's true. Tom, I, I, I love you much. You're the man. Can you take me out with Kobe style? I can indeed. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. 
She's so special to me. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. we got a lot of callers named Mike this hour. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm okay. Tom, uh, I have a great story for you on that embarrassing uh, thing that you do for your uh, girlfriend. Yeah, when you're first in a relationship, you do a lot of things that you would never get caught dead doing. Yeah, this one's horrible, man. This one's embarrassing. You're going to say on the air. But I had to call in because I just had to. Uh, here's the story. Uh, I met this girl. We went out for a while, and uh, she told me, okay, uh, let's go somewhere. I mean, at that moment, I was paying for most of the stuff for dinner and all that, like always, like an idiot. And uh, she tells me, no expenses. All right. She buys tickets, and we go to the CBS studio. And uh, we end up, I, I was thinking it was the price is right. I was like, all right, it's going to be cool. I could win some money or something. I mean, and uh, it ends up being the Tyra Banks show. Tyra Banks show. Oh, and, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it gets worse. I was, uh, it was me and another guy that were the only ones there, only pussy wolf guys there. And uh, pretty embarrassing at that point. And then uh, after that, I mean, uh, I went home two weeks later. I have friends calling me back saying that they saw me on the Tyra Banks show. <laughs> <laughs> it ends up they put my my face near the camera, or they were in uh, filming a chick in front of me, I guess, like a facial expression, and, and I was just there. Hey, hey, watch your mouth, oh, bro. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. But, yeah, man, I had to call in and let you know, man, just been listening to your show now and just helped me out so much, man, not, not doing that ever again. And just, well, I uh, hope not. Yeah, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom, 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 Tom. My kiss. Everybody should listen to exactly what you say, and if they do follow it to the T, then it'll work. Period. That, that's it. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. Wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Terry on the Tom like his show. Hello, Terry. Hi, Mr. Likas. How are you? I'm great. Good. Um, so my question and kind of looking for your guidance feedback is that I'm 32, single, uh, relatively successful, and I just wanted to see what your opinion was about if I should feel bad about being single. I mean, I understand what you generally preach, but I don't like being single, so I'm having um, issues with it. Why do you say you don't like being single? Um, well, because it can get lonely at times. I'm very busy with work, um, and when I go out, I typically, I mean, obviously I meet other single people, and it just kind of seems like a cycle, like, meeting single people and I would typically you know I'd like to come home and have someone to come home to why is that so important to you you don't like being with yourself you don't like yourself no I love myself I'm fiercely independent but um, no you're not of course I am then you wouldn't have a problem being alone well that's not necessarily true yes it is I am fiercely independent. I live alone, and I love it. Well, what's good for you is not necessarily what's Oh, good. I'm not saying what's good for me is necessarily good for you, but you can't call yourself independent. You are needy. Well, in your perception, I might be needy. I don't. No. I, why do you need someone to come home to? Well, it's not necessarily I need someone. I want someone to come what, home. What for? So I can... So you can tell them that they don't take the garbage out on time. So you can tell them you don't like the way they dress. So you can tell them uh, that uh, they need to start using uh, facial uh, skin products. So, so you can tell them that uh, they can't have a big screen TV in the living room. What exactly do you need somebody living in your home for? I don't get it. Well, I would. I mean, I would like to have someone to come home to and have someone 
be affectionate with and love. Do you have nobody to be affectionate with now? No. Other so... I mean, not that kind of affection. I have a sister who I love, who you know. And when's I the last time you had? Them. When's the last time you were dating? Um, about a month ago. And what's the problem there? Uh, they were they were a PhD intern with limited um, finances, and why? Why is that a problem? You need somebody to spend money on you. No, 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 no. I actually took them to a Clippers-Sacramento Kings game, and the next morning I was ceremoniously um, dumped because the the gentleman apparently felt demasculine, you know. He didn't appreciate the fact that I had taken him to the game. He was insecure about it. Right. All right. So then you move on to the next victim. No, I don't. No, I'm looking for some genuine feedback here. I don't. I'm give. What makes you think that what I'm giving you is not genuine feedback? Well, because you're generalizing. You know, you've already started out the dialogue with you being fiercely independent, and I am as well. But I. But if you are, if you are that independent, you would not need somebody to be living at your address. Well, and again, I pointed out it wasn't a need, it was a want. I mean, the two, there's a distinction there. I'm I don't agree with that. that. I don't agree with that because, uh, again, uh, you sound sad and you sound like you're not happy with the way your life is going. Well, as far as the romance section, no. Other than that, everything is very good. But why does there need to be romance? This is what I don't get. You don't, I mean, when you meet someone, don't you feel good? Doesn't that, I mean, when you meet someone, when you have romance in your life, it fulfills a feeling well, that is not fulfilled through work. Well, I guess I've been through romance so many times. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but uh, to be jaded about what's really going on. Because from my experience, for men and women alike, uh, what you have in the beginning is lust but we're not allowed to be lustful or horny. We're not allowed to be in need of sex. So we uh, transmorph that into uh, love, uh, that this is some kind of emotional thing. And this is why so many relationships are so good in the beginning and so lousy down the line. Well, the because the sex the is never though. as good as it is in the beginning. I agree that the beginning is lustful, but at some point, to you know, rational people make a choice to love each other. I don't agree with that. I believe it's completely irrational. There is no rational choice to love someone. You don't wake up one day and go, I'm going to start loving Ted. Today is the day. No, you don't say that, but you recognize someone for who they are, their faults, as well as what their qualities are, and you say, yes, I'm going to love this person. Well, if it that's true, I, why is it? why hasn't it happened for you? That's what it, that's what I'm calling you. I'm asking but, for some but, feedback. But here's the point: what maybe what you think is supposed to happen is not supposed to happen. Maybe that's why it hasn't happened. That's not a critique of you. In fact, it should be empowering to you. Rather than feeling that something is missing in your life, maybe your life is the way it's supposed to be. Well, I don't really, I don't really have a response for that. I know you don't, uh, but the reason you don't have a response to that is because you've bought into the, the Walt Disney Disney Channel fairy tale way we bring up girls in this country, uh -huh. uh, with uh, Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast, and this idea that uh, men ride in on white horses with glass slippers and take you off into uh, ha everlasting happiness. Well, I agree with you. One part of that is true, but another part is I look to my role models, and I look at my mother and father, and yes, I, I wish I had the marriage that they have. Yeah, but yeah, let me tell you something about your mother and father. How old are your mother and father? Uh, my father is 55, and my mother is 60, 61. The, they got married in another era. They got married in the era before MySpace and text messaging and cell phones and people having uh, five plasma screens in their house and people having complete freedom to do what they want when you're not looking. Yeah. 
That's why marriages lasted longer back then. Another reason is because there was a stigma to getting a divorce. Another reason is because people were more religious at some point in the past. So what your parents have is a function of when they were kids. I agree with that, and I also agree it's a choice. I mean, they're still human beings. They still, you know, they fight just like anyone else, but they choose you know yeah but nowadays nowadays what happens is uh when when it's inconvenient to stay together people find other options uh nowadays and i i'm not being i know you think i'm i'm treating your problem lightly but yeah, don't don't dismiss it so out of hand you you'll think about what i said and it'll start to make sense at some point uh, i have come to find that relationships are like TV series. What was your favorite TV series, like a sitcom? Uh, but what was your fave? Um, I don't watch TV currently, but when I was growing up, it was Magnum P.I. because my father made me watch it with him. Well, that was not a sitcom. Did you ever watch a sitcom? Um, Seinfeld on occasion. Seinfeld. That's take Seinfeld. Good idea, right? Yeah. Seinfeld was on nine years. The show ended in 1999. They had a big final episode. And love people love that show. You probably liked it at least. Yes. The episodes I saw, amazing, hilarious. Right. People loved it. <laughs> and, and, and I loved it too. And when it ended, I didn't want it to end, but I sat there and I looked at it and I said, you know what? That was a pretty good show. I laughed a lot. I had a good time. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. If Jerry Seinfeld told me in 1990 that at some point he's going to stop doing the show and I'm only going to get a few years, would I have wanted to miss that? And the answer is no. So I'm glad I had my nine years with Jerry. And that's how I look at relationships. And if you look back on the relationships you've had, they were all like TV shows that, that eventually got canceled. Yeah. I'm sure you've got relationships you look back on and say, that was pretty good. I'm sure you've got relationships that while they ended, you, you're glad to have had them. There are probably people you look back fondly on. And just like you see every once in a while, Jerry Seinfeld on Channel 13 late at night in L.A. or whatever. Um, every once in a while, you might run across a photograph of, of somebody or might run across them in the store. And, and and after you walk away, you go, that was good seeing them for a minute. That's a fond memory. But, you know, the, the life is so short. Can we really spend our time worrying about whether every sitcom is going to run 100 years? <laughs> or should we enjoy every experience we can have and make it last as long as we can, knowing that most of them do not last forever? Okay. By the way, I was once like you. Do well, you know I'm what? Sure part of you. Do you know Wait, what I I'm regret? Sure you you want to know? I'm sure you don't want to admit it. I'm sure a part of you is still like me. No, no. Part. Let me tell you. Let me tell you though. I, I, I'm being honest with you. And again, when I first started talking to you, I think you thought I wasn't taking you seriously or uh, treating your your question seriously. But I really am. Um. If I have any regrets in life, and I've got very few because my life has turned out great in, in so many ways, I often think about when I was like you. And I think about, number one, all the women I never, ever had fun with in any way. That's not just sex. It's any kind of fun because I thought they couldn't be loyal to me. I think of the women that I would have enjoyed having six months or three months or nine months hanging out, maybe traveling to a foreign country for a week, uh, having sex, uh, doing fun things that I'll always remember. And then after that, realizing that this person, you just can't trap them in a cage. It's like the difference between an eagle and a parakeet. There are some birds you can put in a cage and some you can't. And I wonder sometimes, there are specific women, I can see their faces as I'm talking to you right now. Women I would not get involved with because I knew they'd break my heart. But I had it all wrong. 
if I assume from the beginning that some people are not meant to be in the kind of relationship you're describing, and I, I could agree. just enjoy them for who they were in the time and place where I met them, my life would have been a fuller, richer experience as it is becoming today. And there are many couples your parents' age, maybe it's not your parents, who give every indication of being happy and being together and all that, who would never tell their kids that they wanted to break up or they came close to breaking up or that they don't have sex anymore. <laughs> There's a lot of that out there. I agree. And so, you, you know, you can't look back to your parents, or your grandparents, and say, oh, my grandparents married... You know, 70 years, why can't I have that? Well, you turn on that old uh, that old geezer Paul Harvey on the radio, 75 years married today. It's like, guess what? They got married when mom, uh, who's a hot-blooded little thing there, uh, didn't have MySpace, uh, couldn't be an attention whore with text messaging, uh, couldn't run out behind grandpa's back. So she was pretty much an indentured servant to him. Yeah. Times have changed, and women do whatever they want, and so do men. And, and and we are living in a dream world to think that we don't do exactly what we want. And I'm telling you, I, it's a rare woman I've met who, despite being in a relationship, when her high school sweetheart comes to town, doesn't want to have lunch with him. Or more. Well, but it's a rare woman who doesn't sign up with classmates.com and start flirting around with people they knew in high school. <laughs> it's a rare woman who doesn't uh, dig up her college boyfriend or some guy comes to town who uh, you had a really hot weekend with once and, and you want to like sneak away for a few hours and you don't want your boyfriend to know. The, uh, Mr. Likas, I think you need to date more women. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you think I have a date? You wait, wait, wait. wait. Do you think? Wait a minute. You think I need to date more women than I'm dating now? Yes, because not. I honestly don't feel that that is a large percentage of women. That type of oh, behavior. Oh, darling, is darling, that. darling, you you are so wrong. I, I have come to. But would ever do something like that? Maybe they wouldn't tell you they would do it. I, here's where I'm at now. I'm not paranoid or controlling. I'm the exact opposite. My attitude, if I'm dating a woman, is I assume that even if she doesn't do those things, it's possible that she will. Of course. And so I don't demand to know where she is, what she's doing, who she's doing. I don't give her money, so I don't feel that, that, that she owes me anything. And that also gives me the right to do what I want. Tell you something else about a relationship, dear, and I don't know how many you've had. One thing I have found as a man being with women is that women see us on their best days. Maybe we see them on our best days, but generally women see us on their best days. Best hair days, no period, <laughs> no crankiness. You're meeting the representative. Horny, ready to go. So what happens is when you move said female into your place, okay. now you see her on all those days that you've never seen her before. No makeup. Wearing that green goop on her face. And you love Cranky. her regardless. No, that's your fantasy. We don't <laughs> love her regardless. You we're should. saying to ourselves, this is not fun like it was when we were dating. No. I don't you really think, think men don't think that way? Well, you're going to be in for a rude surprise, darling. You're already 32 and you're not married and you're not in a relationship. You, you really need to open up and look outside the box. Yeah, but then if you look outside the box, you let in a lot of low-caliber people. But I mean, Low-caliber people? Uh, darling, I, I'm not after low-caliber people. I'm just not out to own anybody. Well, I'm not necessarily looking to own anybody. Yes, you are. You want someone who will exclusively live in your home, exclusively be waiting in your living room, exclusively for you to exclusively come home from your job. 
Yes, you just and said they so. Want the, and they that's, want the same thing. That's they ownership. Want the same thing. Well, fine, call it mutual ownership if you will, but you're looking for ownership. You are not look. It's the difference between going to the library and checking out six books, and buying a book, reading it, and then putting it up on a shelf. <laughs> okay. And, and I'm telling you, I think you are too narrow in your view. While I might agree with that, I think if you widen your view too far, it's just, I mean, I don't know. I just, are you afraid I, to be happy with the way things are? No, I, I mean, outside of the romance, well, I think a part of it, too, is probably because I don't sleep around, so there are sexual desires that I have, but I'm definitely not willing to comp. I'm sorry, well, no matter what you say, I'm not willing to compromise on that, so... But maybe, uh, maybe what you need is the, the, the female equivalent the one that is palatable, and you can call it any nickname you like, the female equivalent of my bullpen, where you have, you're not, you're not looking for Mr. Goodbar, you're not having sex with every guy you meet, but there's a certain limited number of people you know, some of whom like to go to chick flicks with you, some of whom might like to go see the Dave Matthews Band with you, some of whom you might go to a Dodger game with, uh, some of whom might uh, be, uh, you know, uh, tough guys. I mean, who knows what? They fulfill different functions. And rather than trying to find one-stop shopping, the male equivalent of a shopping mall, uh, you find various specialty shops where you get exactly what you want. <laughs> I mean, I must tell you, shopping is much more interesting having Bed Bath & Beyond and Barnes and & Noble, and Best Buy. Then in the days when you went to, uh, you know, uh, the, the Broadway, and there were 73 departments on 10 floors. Yeah. How about getting somebody who specializes in something, and then I have found for myself, I like having one person who cleans up well that I could take to a, a, like a corporate event. And you know what I do for a living. Yeah. Somebody who, if they were in the presence of people I do business with, they wouldn't embarrass me. By the way, not a lot of people like that. So there are women who are good at that. There are some women who are, uh, I could potentially, like, they could meet my brother or my friends. Some who couldn't. Well, there are, I... there are some who'd enjoy going to a ball game and having a beer with me. Yes, and others really... who don't know, and others who don't know first base from third base. Well, I, ideally that would be great, but then that would, I mean, that would imply that I need to detach myself emotionally, which for women, I'm sure you can somewhat agree, is very difficult. Yeah, but again, the emotional attachment is based on a fantasy, which is frequently a fallacy. I'm not saying your parents aren't happily married or your grandparents weren't happily married. These are different times. Where more than one in two marriages ends in divorce. Yeah, I understand that. And let's not talk about all the people who stay married who are miserable. Beyond the fantasy and fallacy, women biologically are just, I mean, we're we're monogamous creatures. We're not, we don't. I I do not agree. Darling, as I'm looking at Miley Cyrus showing her green bra on the Internet, I'm sorry. I think that's a fallacy. At one trip through MySpace will disabuse you of this notion. Yeah, well, but, I mean, look, I don't know many Me people. and my drunk, I'm looking at pictures right now of somebody. Me and my drunken friends on New Year's Eve. Me those and the are, girls in Cancun. Those are little girls. Are little girls. <laughs> These are not little girls. These are girls in their 20s and early 30s. And, of course, there are younger ones. I'm talking about the ones who would be old enough that I could potentially have them. All right, because because just like women love to say guys don't want to grow up, guys don't want to grow up, and I'm seeing women 35 years old walking around with Hello Kitty purses <laughs> and Betty Boop uh, attire, and they love to say that men don't want to grow up. 
Well, I'm telling you, if you don't think there's women your age uh, taking pictures at every angle and posting them on MySpace, guess again. Why don't you go look and see? Don't take my word for it. Understood. I just say, dear, be open-minded. Rethink your position. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Like his show. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Fred on uh, the Tom Like his show. Hello. What's up, Tom? What's up, Poppy? How you doing today? I was doing my thing here, Fred. Well, that's good. It sounds like you're doing really well today. Yesterday was a little bit less passion. Uh, 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 people that, uh, that, have, that just didn't have an understanding. And today I just want to share with our listeners that this is how you take down a girl, the way you're doing it today. By the way, long time, first time, I listened to you back in the 80s when I lived in Austin, Texas. I know you weren't in Austin, Texas, but I couldn't figure out if you were, if it was coming out of Dallas or Houston. But I used to just creep up in a place where I could hear you, and the wind would just draw your, your, your signal away. I live in oh, L.A. Oh, yes, now. you were picking me up from an L.A. station, yes. Probably, probably. I admire you, Tom. You're a great guy. I, I use the tools that you give these people. I can't understand why they just can't get it, why they don't stick to it, but that's why you're in business. But what I want to share with the, with, with the listeners today is the conversation that you were just having with that young lady. I kind of tuned in a little bit late. But, guys, that's exactly the way you work it. Okay, if you turn around and you continue to work it that way, before you know it, those panties will be off. You don't have to spend 40 bucks. She'll invite you over to your place, and presto, it's done. You have a great experience, and you leave with a smile. Tom, Good. thanks a lot for having me. I'm a continuous listener. I will call you at another time. Take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus, please. Here it comes, Fred. Jesus. Here's Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Brian. Good. Glad it's Friday. Glad to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I had a, a quick question. Well, actually, that last uh, last call reminded me. Did you do anything on Sunday for 20? Uh, well, yes. I, I told you the Tom Likas show went green this week. Nice. No, it's trying to help out the environment, huh? Yeah, exactly. Uh, as you know, we've stopped giving out the Tom Likas show uh, plastic bags. And uh -huh. uh, now if you want a six-pack here, uh, there's no plastic rings. You have to take each bottle individually from the Tom Likas show. Nice, nice. I like that, Tom. <laughs> and Anyway, Tom, uh, I had a quick question. Uh, I'm in college right now. I go over to Cal State Fullerton. Um, I have a job that doesn't make that much, but I only have to pay my, my auto insurance and my, my auto payment every month. Uh, my parents pretty much cover everything else, but uh, if I make I make about ten ten eighty eight at my job, um, I can only work a thousand hours a year, so I only make about ten grand a year. But how much of that would you suggest I save up? The idea is to save up enough so that you would have money in case of a rainy day. So uh, you got to figure out your living expenses for like say six months or a year, right? and save it, bank it. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. She always say that save save enough for have a year saved up. But I just wondered, as a working part time, you know, going to college, uh, if you still would suggest that much. Well, I would suggest that you bank as much as it's uh, possible to bank up to somewhere between six months of the year. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.